the use of the sound effects um, that are, I think, I think a huge contributor to the violence of the scene, the stabbing sounds in particular. How do you come up with the sound of what happens when a butcher knife strikes flesh? The sound man came up with the idea of, what about a knife stabbing melons? So, knowing Hitchcock, you would have to bring lots of melons and arrange them on a big table. There'd be Crenshaw melons and all, you know, any kind of melon that you can imagine, a very, very different size. So I think they had about two dozen uh, and some backups. So there's the prop man stabbing melon, 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 next melon, melon, melon. And so by the end of it, Hitchcock knew the one that sounded most like sinew and sounded the way he thought it should sound. So when they were through demonstrating all of these different melons, all he said was, cassava. That's all they needed to know. I think the whole key to the sound of the cassava melon is that the inner gooey part is very small and there's a very thick layer of fruit that you have to stab through. It's very dense. It's dense. not hollow, like a lot of the other melons sounded a little bit hollow. And I'm sure with his eyes closed, Hitchcock was probably hearing that. To my ear, cassava melon sounds more like dry, bony stabbing as opposed to wet, gooey stabbing. The starchiness and the thickness probably gives you more of that viscera, ah, the crunchiness or the... Viscera. <laughs> viscera. <laughs> Hitchcock also had them bring a sirloin, a really big thing of sirloin. I don't eat meat, and so I'm nearly nauseous telling you this, but uh, in any case, Hitchcock thought that would be a really great idea. And they did, in fact, stab a big, big, big slab of steak. And so that sound is interspersed with melon. 